Hello and uh, welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode, the show, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, as last week's episode, the show was uh, uncontroversial. Um, I certainly didn't have uh, Mr Simmons uh, appear at my front door, um, you know, saying rude words to me. So um, that was quite, <laughs> that was good. Um, in fact, I actually got very little feedback, well, practically no feedback was, uh, at all from any of the um, uh, distributors, distilleries, that kind of thing, even though I did uh, email uh, a few people. But yeah, I guess no news is good news, I suppose. But um, it's, it's often the, the, the way, in actual fact, it's, it's quite surprising. Um, you know, if I do an episode of the show on a particular distillery or, or what have you, uh, email them and say, look, you know, there you go. Um, <laughs> most of the time, I actually hear absolute bugger all. I probably get a, you know, a, a sort of a reply saying, oh, thanks for that. I'll have a look at it when I've got a chance. And yeah, that's pretty much about it, in actual fact. So, you know. Obviously, I'm not doing it for, for that and pats on the back and all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, doing it to entertain you guys and um, not entertain myself as well, to, to be fair. Um, but anyway, um, enough of uh, enough of that. Let's uh, let's talk about um, uh, today's episode of the show. Um, as you can see from the title page, we'll, oh, I'm taking a look at, uh, at Whistle Pig. Um, not the first time I've uh, reviewed um, their... Uh, their bottlings um, did uh, I read them in June of uh, 2019 episode 319 along with uh, um, some um, samples from two brewers in Canada and um, obviously you're thinking well Canada America well, I mean yeah all right you can see the obvious but um, at, for, for those of you who don't know um, whistle pig um, bottle rye and they source a lot of it um from canada although i i think somebody told me uh i think it might have been one of the reps actually that some of their rye is now coming from mgp um but essentially they source uh, source rye from canada don't know which distillery um uh, seagram's possibly i don't know um and then age it in in vermont uh, where the distillery is based and then bottle it although um, they do grow some of their own uh, rye and do a bottling, um, not wholly of their own rye, called the uh, the farm stock, which I have a sample of. Um, and um, so, big thank you to the, uh, the the rep from Whistlepig, whose name I completely forget, so I really do apologise about that. But uh, he came and visited just before lockdown in uh, in 2019, and. Um, Obviously, lockdown kind of threw everything into uh, into complete disarray. Um, but I guess part of the, well, the, the 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 real reason, apart from the fact that I had enough samples um, uh, to do a whole episode of the show on them, was I received this this baby, um, which you probably haven't got a clue what it is. So uh, it came from a chap called Oisin Davis of uh, Great Irish Beverages. It came. Uh, I got sent an email saying. Uh, uh, we're sending out samples of uh, this particular bottling of uh, single cask bottling of Whistle Pig that was exclusive to the single malt shop dot com. Um, and I'm thinking this is all a bit weird, isn't it? Canadi I'm getting a Canadian whiskey from an Irish guy. Um, it doesn't make a great deal of sense. But then obviously I had a look and um, get, I think that the single malt shop is based in Ireland. And one assumes that Oisin is the distributor or the Irish distributor for Whistlepick. I probably should have asked him that, but I, I didn't. I just kind of said, yes, please send me a sample. Um, and that kind of, and I thought, well, you know, he obviously wants me to review it. And um, I could have shoehorned it in with some other rise. Um because I did a Rye episode of the show a couple of weeks ago, but I had a rummage around and realised that I actually had enough wh whistle pig samples uh, from various sources to, to, to do an entire episode of the show. So as I've kind of already talked about the distillery back in the, the previous episode, um, I'm not going to go into any great detail, uh, apart from, um, well, let's uh, just take a look at the line So as I said, um, they principally source their their rye from um, Canada or MGP possibly, um, and mature it in Vermont and then bottle it. Aside from, like I said, this particular bottling, the first one we're looking at, which is the uh, farm stock rye. This is 
uh, bottling uh, crop 03 uh, bottle at 43%. It comprises 52% three year old Vermont straight rye batch PD06, 31% six year old Canadian straight rye uh, batch 225, and 17% ten year old Canadian straight rye batch 1040. And this is another thing I love about the distillery is the complete openness. It's you know, they make no, they don't hide the fact that they source the, 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 the rye from Canada. Uh, they just give you all the information. You know, they tell you everything about it either on the website, on the, on the back, back labels, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, this is no big deal in America, you know, you have so many, you know, distilleries that do this kind of thing that nobody bats an eyelid, yeah. but yet, as I've mentioned over here, you know, there seems to be a bit of an issue about, you know, oh, well, it's not all their own stuff, is it? They're just taking somebody else's stuff, you know. Um, I don't care. <laughs> you know, as long as it tastes good, that's the juice in the bottle is, is all that really sort of uh, matters at the end of the day. So anyway, this, this particular bottling of farm stock, um, Rye Crop 3, uh, was bottled in June of 2019 and <laughs> about, about, about the time that I actually did the last episode of the show on them and I forget when the, uh, like I said, the rep came, but I'm guessing it would have been around about sort of I think November of 2020 when we just about to sort of go into lockdown so uh, certainly that's that's when my tasting note was uh, dated so anyway we'll kick off with with some of their own uh, second bottling we'll be looking at is the uh, straight rye 10 year old 100 proof or 50 percent um, like I said I'm guessing uh, maybe um, uh, Canadian rye and then sort of matured for at least I, th I think they, they I don't know what age spirit they buy from Canada but I, I believe that they they age it for at least three years in in the States and I said it didn't really bother me, bother me. Um, now these two samples uh, I have were either from the World Whiskey Awards or from the Whiskey Magazine Tasting. Certainly, that, this this certainly was, so I'm guessing this probably was. Uh, this is the 12-year-old Old World Series Madeira finish, bottled at 45%. Um, and as I tasted this in July 2015, I'm guessing it dates back to that kind of time. And I don't think that this particular bottling is, uh, is still is, is done. I think it's a, an archive release now. Then we're going to move on to two uh, bottlings of the 12 year old. They're exactly the same, well, technically, apart from the fact that one different batches. So the first 12 year old Old World series bottling um, it comes from 2016. I tasted it in February for the World, uh, for the Whiskey Magazine. And this is. One, again, another interesting thing about the distillery that they like to use certain types of, uh, of casks. So this is 63% uh, in Madeira, 30% uh, uh, aged or, or for, matured for a period of time in Saturns, and 7% in port. Um, same makeup for this bottling, uh, but this basically comes from, uh, or was bottled in uh, September of 2018. I think the code was HT01. So same makeup, different batch, and we'll see whether there's any real difference between the two. And finally, we're on to uh, the, the reason for the tasting. Uh, this is a single cask rye. It's called the Rutland Barrel. Uh, it was uh, cast number 2413, bottled at cast strength of 56.9%. And like I said, this is an exclusive to the singlemaltshop.com. Um, and it's bloody expensive. So, um, And this is the elephant in the room, I guess, with Whistlepig. Um, even if I bought it directly from their distributors, it's still not a cheap whiskey. Um, and... Um, I I guess that's the, the I never had an issue with the quality of uh, of what they've done. So uh, it's more a case, a case of what it would go on the shelf at, and you know I, I've got no problem with putting um, expensive whiskies on on the shelf, but of course by their own. <laughs> 
by default they're going to sit there for quite a while. You know, I don't have customers coming in every every day asking to to, to purchase you know eighty, hundred, two hundred, three hundred pound um, bottles of whiskey. You know, the the sweet spot as we know is the sort of thirty to fifty pound mark, and um, these are a little bit more expensive than that, or they certainly were from memory. Whether they still are or not, of course, is another matter. But anyway, um, I'm not talking about a certain. Uh, uh, a certain uh, whiskey emporium uh, of course any comments that I do make today are wholly my own and of course have no bearing or relevance uh, to my employee or employer I should say anyway I think that's enough waffle uh, I think it's about time I actually uh, tasted some juice Right, okay, so let's start with the uh, the farm stock. Let's see what the notes gives us on this end, shall we? That's a lovely nose. Elegant, delicate. Plenty of Canadian character, that sort of pot, uh, column still, uh, dried fruit, lightly oiled, subtly spiced, subtly sweet. Not a huge amount of oak. I'm not getting a great gobbins of, sort of vanilla or anything like that, so rye up front and center and it's a lovely balance between um the sweet rye and the spicy rye notes slight saltiness possibly uh, a little bit of menthol some lovely fleshy fruit coming through now sort of white fruit uh, banana i'm getting a little bit more toast now coming through um as it kind of sits in the glass um but overall, I mean, that is, that is a gorgeous nose. That is absolutely gorgeous. Um, really complex, elegant, but deep. Let's see what parts like. Again, elegant, light, column still dried fruit. Again, got that real Canadian character. Um, Again, a really lovely balance of sweet and spicy rye, touch of wood smoke, a little bit of grilled nuts, bit more oak on the palate, um, but again, we're not talking overkill oak. It's kind of moving through on the mid palate with that sort of bit, that vanilla, the grilled nuts, um, and then the rye kind of comes back on the finish again, sort of a little bit of spice, a little bit of touch of ma, just a touch. Just that three-year-old is obviously just poking through right on the finish as the sort of the, the, the slightly more mature spirit kind of like sort of drops off and you just get that little bit of a, a, a Mari kind of note right on the finish. Um, lovely aftertaste, mouth coating, honeyed. Um, again, just it's just a beautiful whiskey, really balanced. Um, and, and this is the thing with using... You know, vacking together spirits of, of, of different ages, you know, it adds to the complexity. Uh, well, if it does, then brilliant, you know, and certainly in this case, uh, that it does that. You can taste there's a core of, of slightly more mature spirit, and then around it, you've got the younger notes, and just, just really beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Okay, so let's move on to the 10-year-old uh, uh, 100 proof. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Definitely m more noticeable oak. Um, buttery, toasty, sort of clotted cream. Um, a sort of an almost kind of corniness as well, a sweet corn though. The rye is not quite so sort of spicy. There is a subtle spiciness, a sweet spiciness. Um, but it's certainly more oak up front, and I'm certainly getting a lot more sweetness, a lot more, almost like I say, fat corn sweetness. Um, maybe the sort of the first fill casks, possibly. Um, again, there's a, a slight sort of saltiness there, and a pepperiness, and you need it needs to have time in the glass for the rye to kind of come through. Um, just to sort of fight its way through all the oak. Um, still really delicate, elegant. Certainly doesn't smell like 50%, it has to be said. Uh, the alcohol is really well contained. And again, it's just, just a lovely nose. Let's see what the pass on. Oh, 
that's got a lovely spicy hit on the finish. Right, the ogre's a bit more sort of um, well behaved on the palate, not quite so overt, um, more rye character, more spicy rye character, sort of slightly bitter spicy rye character, less of the sweetness, um, quite grainy again, um, slightly tannic, lovely aftertaste, touch of honey again, white fruit, um, but the sort of the, the the intense spicy rye is right up there. It is basically you know there's, there is no sort of you taste this blind. Absolutely you know there's no doubt that you are tasting a rye whiskey. Um, yep, the nose is a little bit heavy on the oak. It's a little bit sort of not unbalanced, but it, the rye has to kind of work really hard to get through that. But the palate is absolutely spot on. Um, lovely intensity, lovely purity of of of, of spicy rye character as opposed to sort of sweet rye character um mm, good stuff right okay so let's move on to the 12 year old uh, madeira finish so I, I think if memory serves me right around that they used to do these um the single um cask finishes so they did a uh, a port and they did a madeira i think i reviewed the madeira um finish in the in the last episode I did um, but anyway let's uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we it's got a, lot, a noticeable Madeira character um, slightly biscuity maybe not as biscuity as some Madeira um, cask finishes I've come across lovely sort of thick cut orange marmalade um, sweet white white fruits um, Winey white fruits. Um, again, a lot more oak and less less rye character. Um, there's a little bit of, of of bitter rye spice coming through. A little bit of bitter chocolate as well. Um, I mean, that's a lovely nose. It's a little bit heavy on the oak again, um, but certainly it's got a, a lovely sweetness which. It's sort of balancing the spiciness of the uh, of the rye. Um, personally, uh, maybe a little less oak influence possibly would have been, um, you know, ideal. But you know, it's not completely swamped. You were saying that's a good thing about rye. I mean, rye just has this intensity of personality that does seem to stand up well to being hammered by lots of uh, of oak. So um, yeah, let's see what that's like. Again, quite oaky, kind of kicks off with a sort of late harvested sort of um, winey fruit. Um, spicy rye comes through on the mid palate, a bit of pepper, a bit of dark chocolate, um, a little bit of salt again. Um, and then the Madeira kind of comes back on the finish with that sort of, you know, biscuity, honeyed um, kind of character. I think the alcohol kind of works. I think... Uh, I think 50% seems to offset some of the sweetness of the uh, of the Madeira cask. Uh, again, the rye is a little bit hidden, uh, but not totally hidden. Um, like I said, it does come kind of come through on the mid palate, but it is a bit fleeting, shall we say? Uh, you know, sort of being sandwiched in between the oak character. But again, it's a lovely bottling. Um, it's you know really really lovely. Um, I can't remember what, what it hit the shelves for, but I remember thinking this was bloody expensive. Um, but, mm, pretty good. Right, okay, so let's move on to the first of the two 12-year-old uh, Old World Series bottlings. So bottled at 43%. Um, although you might notice that uh, whoever sent me the sample from uh, the Whiskey Magazine actually wrote 45% on the uh, on the bottle, which confused the hell out of me. Um, anyway, it's 43%. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us. Now this is really chlorinated, quite salty. Um, fresh, crisp, Again, sort of like some quite chunky oak, um, chunky vanilla, you know, it's not a mm, buttery, toasty. 
Again, the rye is kind of like um, a bit subservient to the oak, but it is definitely there. There's a sort, of, like I said, it's got that kind of chlorinated, salty sort of fresh note on the edge. Um, a little bit of spice, a little bit of spicy rye. Again, it's a lovely nose. It's it's an impressive nose. It's got a lovely complexity. Again, maybe a touch heavy on the oak, possibly. Um, but uh, let's see what uh, what the palate gives us. quite drying. Don't get the oak coming back on the finish like I did with the Madeira finish. Um, certainly opens with the oak, that slight toasty oak, um, a little bit of creaminess and vanilla. But the rye kind of comes in pretty sharpish actually, um, with a lovely bitterness, uh, a lovely spiciness, sort of pepper. Um, again, it's that slight sort of chlorinated salty you note know, right on the finish it's got a, a bit of a, a youthful sort of kick to it a um, little bit of a herbal note coming through on the aftertaste again lovely I mean good progression um, not a, a, and this seems to be the sort of the way of, of, of whistle pig I guess um, which is something I hadn't really kind of noticed um, because you know I, I very rarely get the, the opportunity to um, taste a number of uh, releases all in one go. I'm normally sort of getting the old one or two every now and again. And so this is as much of a learning curve, I guess, for, for me as it is for you guys, I suppose. Um, and there is a definite sort of um, blueprint going on here. If you ignore the, um, the farm stock, it is basically quite heavy oak nose, um, and not quite so heavy oak palette. You know, I don't know whether that's done deliberately by design or whether that's just the, 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 the nature of the beast, shall we say. But there certainly seems to be um, a, a, a modus operandi in, uh, in it going on. Okay, so let's move on to the second, uh, the more recent uh, bottling of the Old World series. Let's see what the nose gives us. Right, now this has got more Madeira character, more biscuity, nutty, obvious Madeira character. I mean, certainly um, having tasted the, uh, the, the Madeira finish, um, I can certainly pick that up now. Um, wasn't quite so prevalent in the previous one. Um, chunky, whiny, again heavy, heavy oak, subtle rye, a um, little bit of honey, getting a little bit more porty notes as well, even though the, 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 it's only 7% like the, the previous one. Um, I, I kind of guess that certainly going back to, going back to this one, it's, I'm getting, I wouldn't say quite homogenous oak, um, Certainly, uh, I'm getting sort of big, chunky, almost vanilla. A um, little bit of toast on that one. Um, this definitely screams more, um, uh, more Madeira. And again, there's that sort of fresh, sort of almost kind of saltiness at the edge. A um, little bit, maybe a little bit more herbal, a little bit more intense, possibly, uh, this particular batch. And I'm certainly picking up some some porty notes as well. Um, so I'm getting more individual cask notes in this later batch than I did in the previous batch. Let's see what uh, the pass like. Again certainly more of the Madeira character up front, biscuity and then dried fruit. The, the rye is not kind of coming through quite so quickly, um, but it certainly does. Sweet, sweet, note, sweet rye notes, peppery rye notes, um, portiness kind of coming back on the finish. More complex than the previous batch, it has to be said, more characteristic 
um, more oak characteristic on the palate. Um, the, the, the previous bottling just seemed to be sort of like a chunk of oak up front and then whoosh, in came the rye and that was pretty much it for, the, for it. Not saying that that was a bad bottling, it was lovely. This is quite different and this, and here we have a kind of classic example of batch variation. Um, and it's not necessarily uh, one batch happens to be good, one batch happens to be bad. It's just the fact that, you know, this is the nature of the beast. It's a natural product. You're always going to get variations between batches, uh, and which is something that sort of the whiskey industry as a whole just, I wouldn't say refuses to kind of acknowledge, um, but it certainly doesn't tend to sort of want to um, educate consumers with that. They would rather basically smother the damn stuff with caramel and basically say, look, it's exactly the same. Yeah, ain't no, no, there's no difference at all. Uh, which, I'm not going to get started on the whole caramel issue because obviously that's got nothing to do with this episode of the show. Um, but what I'm basically trying to say is that th this is a classic example of batch variation. Doesn't necessarily mean one batch is better or worse than the other. It's just they're, they're very different. Um, and that's just one of the wonderful things about whiskey isn't it uh, and you know it should be um should be you know more talked about i suppose it should be more emphasized rather than sort of going down the sort of the, the route of we don't want to actually talk about batch variation because it's a bit of a, a dirty secret kind of thing because it isn't nuts but anyway that, that we're talking about sort of uh, scotland rather than uh, america on this uh, but then again i suppose it, all the world is uh, can be a bit like that, but anyway, let's move on. Right, okay, so um, on to the final bottling of the day. Like I said, this is the, the real reason for this entire episode of the show. This is the 11 year old Rutland barrel. Um, don't know where the term, where the name Rutland comes from. <laughs> Maybe, um, I don't know connection with Rutland in, in the UK, I don't know, who knows, anyway, um, I'm sure somebody will enlighten me to, to, to what the relevance of Rutland is, but anyway, let's uh, see what uh, the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, that's quite different, um, that's quite Weetabixy, malty, um, plenty of rye, toasted rye, cereal, I'm getting obviously no wininess, I'm assuming single American oak cask, um, there's certainly that vanilla ice cream, marzipan, again it's got a youthfulness there, a youthful sort of mari note, um, a little bit of rose petal, um, touch of bitter rye, oak is kind of like well behaved, sat in the background, so again we're a bit kind of like the farm stock. We're kind of rye up front and centre, oak supporting, which is, you know, my kind of preferred nose, it has to be said. Touch of, um, yeah. oh, I just can't get past that bloody wheat bixie note. Um, I'm really desperately trying. Um, bit of oxidised fruit. Um, it's almost kind of cognac-esque kind of note. Now, I mean, this is a stunning cask. I mean, really complex. Um... Do you want to know how much it retails for? 490 euros. Jesus Christ, for an 11 year old single cask. I mean, this is stunning, but I just kind of like think, is it really worth it? Mm. I mean, stunning nose. Um, anyway, let's see what the pals are. Again, biscuity, Weetabix, touch of mar, lovely spicy rye, subtle oak, oak sat in the background, spicy rye up front, um, pepper, almost malty, um, malt biscuits, um, chewy, touch of vanilla, again, some oxidised uh, oxidized fruit, um, slightly herbal as well I mean that's really complex that's stunning absolutely stunning a um, little bit of woody spice on on the aftertaste um, I mean that's 
that's just a sort of a sensory overload of different characteristics all just kind of coming at you uh, and just going you know whoa. I mean that is just a stunning cast but 490 euros oh. well I'm, I'm sure that there are people that are a lot richer than I am that are quite happy to pay that but you know I'm kind of like going oh Jesus um Stunning. I mean, that really is absolutely stunning. I mean, that is just, 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 just oh, stunning. Right, OK, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. So firstly, a big thank you to um, everybody that uh, sent the samples um, to Whistle Big, the Whiskey Magazine, Oisin. Um, yeah, I the, the, appreciate uh, the support and, uh, you know, hopefully um, nobody's going to be upset with the review. Um, the, the farm stock, I mean, that was, that was impressive. That was lovely. I mean, um, it seemed to sort of defy the, um, the natural order of whistle pig in that it was kind of up front and centre rye. I kind of bookended the tasting with that kind of thing because, you know, that really floated my boat, it has to be said. Um, I love rye whiskey. I want to taste rye whiskey. I don't really want too much oak. Um, and, you know, the, the farm stock was just absolutely spot on. I'm assuming that over time that they will increase the, the percentage of their own rye and less of the uh, the Canadian rye in this particular bottling but I got no problem with that I mean that's 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 a lovely bottling um yep the straight the 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 hundred proof um didn't need the uh, didn't need a drop of water not that I've got an awful lot to put water with it and the same with the single cask of 56 percent alcohol is just so beautifully contained um love the intensity again like I said this this with the the other um, three bottlings does seem to sort of set out the sort of like the whistle pig kind of uh, raison d'etre I suppose for want of a better word chunky fairly big oak nose subtler rye character flipped over onto the palate uh, on, on some cases uh, sort of the oak is kind of back end uh, book ending the the, the, um, uh, the spice but uh, the, the rye but yeah really good really enjoyable um, the Madeira, yep, so it just the, the whole three of them, you know, with, with the two sort of old world bottlings, kind of, um, like I said, set the stall out for what Whistlepig are trying to do. Interesting batch variation between the, um, uh, the two 12 year olds, uh, but you know, both of them really very, very good. And finally, the, um, the Rutland Barrel 11 year old, I mean stunning stunning barrel it has to be said um you know it, I, i'll leave it up to you guys to decide whether 490 odd euros is what you'd be prepared to shell out for it uh but like i said if you did um it, it is frankly stunning um but expensive so if you if you want to experience stunning you're going to have to shell out for it at the end of the day um isn't that a metaphor for life as they say but anyway that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I, I certainly thought it was a great deal of fun. Um, and, uh, well, not a lot else to say apart from um, good afternoon and good dramming.